For this video, I will be discussing the two wire versus the four wire C4 style ringers. Western Electric, ITT, and Stromberg made both the two wire version and the four wire version of ringers. The ringer that you're presently looking at was removed from a multi-button business telephone and has only one gong. Normally they would have two gongs, but this does not affect how the bell is wired. It was a mechanical design so they could add an additional component due to the limited space inside of the business telephone. This has got a red and a black wire. Here is a four wire bell. It also has a red and a black wire, as well as a slate and a red slate. Both ringers electrically do the same exact thing. The four conductor bell has two windings on the coil versus one winding. The four wire ringers are typically used in the telephones from the 1950s up to the early 1970s. And then as multi-party lines were disappearing, they were convert, changing over to two wire ringers to save on the manufacturing cost. I would demonstrate how to hook up a four wire ringer and a two wire ringer. The important thing to keep in mind, regardless of the ringer, you have to have a half a mic cap. In the case of the telephone networks inside of your conventional desk phones or wall phones, they have a .47 ceramic capacitor. The purpose of the capacitor is to allow alternating current, which is what rings the bell, to pass through it, but it blocks DC current. If you connect a telephone bell to a phone line without a capacitor, it will create an off-hook condition and busy out the phone line, and you will be unable to make or receive calls. So it's important to have a capacitor. This is for all manufacturers of telephones for the U.S. market. I have a network out of a conventional desk phone or wall phone of the rotary dial type. The network is only for illustrations. Each of the manufacturers made networks that were different packages but electrically the same. So this is a Western Electric network that I have. So I will connect up the slate and the red slate to the terminals A and K. It does not matter in today's world what wire is on A or K because the capacitor is between A and K. If you were using this on a multi-party phone line, then some of these issues would um, have to be dealt with because the ringer has got two coils and for multi-party service, the coil could be wired in such a way to ground to provide a certain resistance to the telephone line. So when the automatic equipment was to uh, use it, then um, they would detect the ringer. I will connect up the phone line to the ringer and call it. That's using a four wire bell. I will now demonstrate a two wire ringer. Utilizing the same network, I will connect one side of the ringer to the capacitor. 
I would take my telephone line and connect one side to the other side of the capacitor and one side to the coil of the ringer. and the ringer is ringing. That concludes this version of the two wire or four wire C4 type ringer. As a note, I will show a trim line ringer that's used in ITT and Stromberg telephones. Western Electric had a different package of ringer, but it does not matter. The ITT ringer that you see here has got five wires on it. This was used for multi-party service, primarily two-party service for message rate or long distance. We only need to use the red and the black wire on this ringer. And again, this ringer electrically is the same as the C4 ringers. So again, I would just simply connect up a lead to the capacitor. I'll take my telephone line and connect one side to the other end of the capacitor and one lead to the ringer and we'll call it. This holds true with any ringer out there. You got to have a capacitor in series. So you go from the telephone line to one side of the coil, the other side of the coil to a capacitor, from the capacitor back to the phone line. That way you have a AC circuit to ring the bell but a DC open so you don't have a phone line shorted. If I was to move the, the lead that's connected to the capacitor, hook it to the ringer, I will have created an off-hook condition on the phone line, which means that the phone line will be shorted out, and when people call you, it'll be busy, or when you try to use it, you will either have dial tone you cannot break, or you will not be able to hang up. So it's very important to have the capacitor in the circuit.